pit pit stop it's a pit stop pit 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 stop it's it's a pit stop pit 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 stop it's a pit stop pit stop pit stop pit stop listen we are back your Purple Pants Podcast Pit Stop crew is back. We have another season of Amazing Race. We are covering Amazing Race, season 36, episode one. I am joined by my Pit Stop host, the amazing, the always positive, the winner of Amazing Race, season 29. Let's welcome back to the podcast as she sits on her rightful throne, Miss Brooke Cam High. Good win. Hello. Always positive. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a Jumo damnedest. That, well, that is, that's the power of positive thinking right there. I will try. It is, Brooke. We have another season to cover and I am so excited. I feel like last season I was like, I'm the most excited ever. But I really think this season I am even more exhilarated for this season of Amazing Race. Um, I feel like I've met some of the amazing racers ahead of time, which is like kind of crazy. Um, so I feel like I'm a little biased, but I, I'm just really excited for this season. I'm back every week with my girl, Brooke Cam High. So, you know, we're going to do our best to not let our outside bias come into our review of the show, but we're going to fail miserably. I'm sure because I too, am totally biased, but I'm going to try not to be, I feel like. First of all, all these teams are amazing, right? Like I awesome. casting did a great job because there is not anybody that I am not rooting for. Now, on my rewatch, I I did have a little notes. I, I feel like I gotta cuss some teams. I feel like I know the team that I'm gonna be the most hardest on, which is probably gonna be surprising. Um, okay, but I feel like you know me, I'm um an emotional being at times. And in the first like five minutes of this episode, Brooke, I was like busting out crying. I really think uh Chris and Mary really like I don't know why, just like you know, and then when we got to Danny and Angie. Oh, oh come on, yes. So it's like I am rooting for the parents. This like I like I, I am welcome rooting. to welcome to Team Brooke rooting for the parent child teams. For the parents, everyone has such a story. Oh my god, the cousins. Everyone has such a story, and I'm excited. I I actually really was a little bit worried that since these were originally edited as an hour and they went back and put in extra time, that it was just going to be fluff and filler and a lot of stupidity. But I really really liked what they did in episode one there was a little bit of dragging there was a lot of driving there was a lot of um four thousand point turns i don't know whatever but for the most part i like the information they put in you can sort of tell where they added and some backstories and so i think it's going to be an absolutely great season i have 17 pages of notes because episode one of a season with 13 teams is ridiculous but that's okay. We're going to do our best. So, you know, buckle up and follow along. <laughs> yes. Uh, I feel like Phil pissed me off this episode what? as always. Well, Why? in the first episode, just because it's that this season, it is non, no non-eliminations. Now, mind you, I've been watching Amazing Race to know that we're going to have at least two super legs. And so, mm -hmm. in my opinion... A super leg, part one of the super leg is a non-elimination round. But Well, I mean, not today, well, sir, I mean, because well. I have to say, there was a little part of me that was like, wait a second, if it's keep racing, it's not a pit stop, there shouldn't be an elimination. I, I'm i sort of of the mind, maybe it's because of who got eliminated and I really didn't want them to go home, but I'm sort of of the mindset, if you're still racing, if there's no first place, if there's no prize, if there's no something, that leg's not over. They should not, but that being said, on the other hand, the Amazing Race has, in the past, eliminated people in the middle of a leg. That wasn't the end of a leg, so they can do really whatever they want, so shut up, Brooke, and we're going to let them do it however they want to do it. So if they want to call this a leg, I I don't. I call it half a leg, so but whatever. We could just call it a thigh. A thigh, exactly. This is the knee up. Yes, the Next knee week, up. knees to toes, um, but... I, I have, agree with you. I think the teams are stellar. I think casting did just, like, perfection in their work so far. I mean, we'll see what happens we'll with see. these teams. We didn't get to know all of them, we'll as is see. the norm, because there were so many teams to be shoving stuff into a first episode. But should we 
Should we talk about it? We absolutely can. <laughs> but let me give you my first take that I was Tell cracking me. up that I was like, I think I'm going to love Karishma. Well, I already love uh, Kashuri and Karishma. But right. when they were running up on the beach, I was thinking like, wait, it's the water, the tide, like the water, the water was going in and out. And I was like, if I were running, I would not want to get my feet wet, like starting the rag off. And you could see uh, Karishma in the little, when she was running, she was like, uh, but. Wow, good noticing good, stuff. Good, come on. Look at you, Mr. Details. Okay. But I definitely would have been on the other side, not trying to get my, uh, my feet wet. Cause it ain't nothing worse than a soggy sock in a sneaker. Agree. I had two pairs of sneakers on the Amazing Race, and in oh my god, we're in Africa. I a pair of my sneakers got a little bit wet, and they got so funky. I was like, they gotta go. I threw them out, and I was working with one for the rest of the race, which was fine. But I had a backup pair just in case something went horribly wrong. But they they went right into the ocean. I was like, this is disgusting. They had so it's a smell I'd never smelled, and so I was like, we're done here. But yeah, imagine starting leg one, minute one with a soggy sock. Uh, mm. I'll be pissed off. Uh, but that was like my first <laughs> note that I was like, let me just take a little something so I'll, Brooke don't show me up. I, you're already making me look bad, which I love. Make me look bad. I'm into it. I did not have that note. I have a lot of notes. I didn't have that note. Okay, so we have 13 teams. We have everyone at the start line in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Uh, it is rare when they start outside of the United States. So this is a little bit different. I like it. Um, and then they all go through their niceties that they say about their partners and feels like, tell us a little bit about yourself. And then we have, you know, a couple of people speak up. You have Michelle and Sean, who are the double dutchers who want to teach Phil to jump rope. You have Anthony and Bailey, who are. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I roll my eyes out loud? I apologize. <laughs> I think they're great. No, I actually I really like them. their story. I just. When common sense is not so common, <laughs> I think, with these two. For me with them, it was when we got a little backstory and they were saying how this race is going to be good for them because they're yes. like, they've always been put against each other. And so I, I was like, like oh, I could see that. Mm -hmm. But then it was like, who makes more money? Who has the hottest girl? Whose hair is longer? Whose eyelash? I was like. <laughs> but then they're like, you know what? It doesn't matter who's better. Like we're better together. And I actually really liked that sentiment between the two of them. And had they not just been like, super ditzy during the first episode i think i would think that they you know i think they complement each other really really well but like maybe maybe it's just you got to get your bearings and your right. footing and i think they, they have the potential to do very very yeah, well yeah. but they're just they're really leaning into that like beach bum surfer dude we love it no, no care in the world style but maybe they, they'll you know flip a switch and get really really mm -hmm. focused I agree. I feel like they started their car and it didn't start all the way. But I feel like soon as that engine, like soon as it revs, I feel like they're going to go. Uh, but I love them. I think their energy is just so fun. And it just they like started so their car. It didn't start all the way. It hit the curb. It almost hit a pedestrian. But but at least it didn't get stuck and they couldn't turn around. So, you know, we have to give them some credit. Um, and then you have Mary and Chris who, oh my God, this is sub story number one, but also father, daughter, you know, I'm obviously already in love with them. These two live in a one bedroom apartment and I'm thinking, just give them the money. This is like the bunk beds of last season. Like we need to get them a bigger apartment. We just need to give them the money. It might just be because I love a father, daughter team and I just want them to win. But no, we need we need them to each have their own bedroom. I feel very strongly about this, yes. and I want them to do well. And they are so oh my god, supportive. Yeah, and if Mary... I was with my dad, I would have been like, "Get up!" And she was like, "It's cool. Don't worry. You're fine. You're fine." Like, <laughs> I I see a little Annalise in Mary, right? Because Mary was on it this episode, like she played no games, and I was like, "Ooh, they we there. We need to watch out for them." But I mean, of course, I was falling in love with Chris because I just feel like, you know, I just loved his energy. But when we get to Danny and Angie, I think they completely eclipsed them in my opinion, because uh, I just love Danny and Annie. Danny, get and to Danny Angie. and Angie, get to it. He's allergic to everything, <laughs> everything. I, I, um, <laughs> And so I think the part where I started crying uh, was when they were in the car and he was like, this has just been my dream. And first of all, why is Angie driving? Okay. It's, okay. Angie was out. She like, uh, and when she was just like anything 
to see my son happy. Like I like I just I feel like I'm tearing up now because it's just like I think about my mom and my mom, you know, she's older, like you know, I, I'm a certain age, so my mom a certain age. Uh, but I feel like if I were to call my mom right now and say, girl, we do an amazing race. Uh and with all of my mom's health issues, my mom would be like, let's go. So I just, uh, I really felt Angie and just seeing her drive and just saying like anything uh, to do for my son, I'll do it. Uh, that really kind of pulled on my heartstring. And, so it's like, and she was doing great. This was not it. like uh, she couldn't hang. She was not only hanging, she, when we, later on in the episode, she was she, rocking it. She said, Danny, you want me to help you? Yes. I said, okay, Angie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have a couple more at the start line. You have Shane and Juan who talk about their making their wives proud. Ivana and Melissa, who uh, she's first, Ivana's first generation Mexican American. Um, I'm thinking that maybe they have a leg up here. Um, and then you have Rowan and Maya who at the start line talk about how big a super fan they are. Talk about how this, this is what got me. How in high school he had to take French and she had to take Spanish so that when this moment happened and they got on the race, they would know how to speak multiple languages. Like, that is some forethought. Mm. Like, <laughs> I really liked them. I loved them. I like I loved seeing the flashback of Maya like in her hat that she was then wearing on the race. I was like, they've been waiting for this moment forever. Uh, and so they they stole my heart. I know. And I'm not going to hold against them that they talked about watching teams like Tammy and Victor and Nick and Star because they're siblings. And so I'm not mad I didn't get a shout out. But honestly, could have given me a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Phil talks about how there's no non-eliminations, how they're going to two new countries. Um, and then here's my other question. Okay, sorry, sorry to cut you off. No, sorry, go, cut you off. Cut right, me my, off. Here was a I question that I wrote. At this point, you just we just just cut me off. Go. Yeah. Here was a question that I wrote. Do you feel like Phil did voiceovers for this intro? Because I don't know if you peeped. They mm -hmm. were going back and forth. And then I was like, two new countries. That's the little answer. I was like, now, how would y'all know that? Because the other one was filmed first. But I was noticing how during that time, they were flashing back. And I said, is Phil in the studio doing a voiceover? So I don't think he was um, because on season 34, they also went to one new country, which was Jordan. And so it's just the same as saying they went to one new country last season. It just happened to be Slovenia as opposed to Jordan. So it, there was no difference. That being said, he does sometimes do a voiceover because in our season, in the last episode, we were in Chicago and um, the Cubs had not won the World Series at the time that we filmed, but at the time that we aired, they had won the World wow. Series. And so he did do a little voiceover that talked about the World Series winning Chicago Cubs. And so they do do that. But in this case, both 34 and 35 went to one new country. So what he was saying here, six and one, it didn't make a difference. Okay. But maybe, I don't know. So then is the moment where I rise out of my body and I start having like these flashbacks about, oh my God, I remember this moment where Phil goes, the world is waiting, good luck, travel safe, I'm crying. And so I have to pause the TV because I'm like having a moment where I'm like, oh my God, I remember how this feels. And it was legitimately, you know, there are some moments in your life where you remember, you'll never forget the exact feeling of that moment. When we were in LA and we had that moment, I remember just being like, oh my God, this is actually this is happening because I was such a fan. And you could tell on the faces of some of the people there, like Ricky, uh, Ricky and Cesar and Rowan and my, you just see their faces and they were just like, like just vibrating. And so I'm crying and I have to wipe away my tears. And then he says, go and they're off. And they I were, am, they were off. They were off, off. Like they, I was like, B baby, it's a marathon, not a race. Slow down. Like, they, I was like, first of all, Rohan was in the front at first. I was like, oh, my you God. You know, if they didn't have to drive anywhere, they would have been okay. They did tasks very fast. And so, unfortunately, you know, you got to drive. But they did do their tasks very quickly. So, anyway, Danny tells his mom as they're running, she doesn't need to go fast. And she's like, yes, I do. Like, he's trying to, like, slow her down. I honestly think she's going to be pulling him along as long as they go. Um, so, and then we meet Derek and Shalisa who are listed as grandparents, but no, mm -mm. they look good. Derek mm -hmm. look good. Shalisa look good. They police officers. Now, mind you, Derek is, I feel like I'm going to have to get Derek together this season. I just could feel now, mind you, I feel like Shalisa can handle her own, but I, there was a couple times I was like, Derek, 
But at the same time, I was like, you know, Derek, if you want to arrest me, <laughs> you, <laughs> they look great. I mean, oh they... my god, oh my, well, I mean, in all fairness, their grandparents in their fifties, so it's not like they're you know, elderly, but they look fantastic. And kudos to her. She talks about being the first African-American woman on the police force. And he was the police chief. Lieutenant I don't know chief. if that's yeah, the he right. Was the chief. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, these two, you can tell are going to be like the snickery bickery ones of the season, but like in a very funny way, like he mocks her and she's like, just shut up. Like they're just very, very cute. And I think they're going to do really, really well. One thing though, girl, you you have a backpack that opens up and like 18 crossword puzzle books fall out of that thing. What are you doing? Like, not only should you not be doing anything other than studying what you've been doing on the race, on the race, like again, you want to keep your mind sharp, but focus on everything you did that day. How much weight in cross within 10 minutes? She's like, no, we're leaving it. It's not going to work. We got to leave it. Okay. I mean, and, and everyone I know has left something along the race course. I left clothes as we went along and I didn't need them anymore. But she had like an encyclopedia of crossword <laughs> puzzle books in her backpack. Yeah. I was thinking that same thing. I, ridiculous. I felt like. Uh, I felt like Derek told her not to bring them and then she brought them anyway and then they fell out and he was like, what are we going to do with these? And she just threw them in the trash. You I would have right. kept one though. Why? What are you Be doing? It could have served as your notebook. No, you should have a notebook. Look, when you go to run the race, I'll pack your bag for you. Okay, so everyone gets their clue, the route info, which is drive to downtown Puerto Vallarta, find the Valadores, which is like the flying bird men, who, by the way, I think I watched this scene eight times. This guy who's on the top of this pole, like jumping up and down, he's not tied into anything to the best of my knowledge. Like these yeah. people are taking their lives into their hands for their art. And it was very cool. So was Anthony. Anthony yeah. was about to put his life on the line. Common sense is not so common. <laughs> no, like, I don't mean to jump ahead. No, that's <laughs> fine. He's like, I think we have. Do I get to free climb this thing? And I think it was. You're, I think it was Anthony. And Bailey's like, No, what are you talking about? He He's was like, no, like, I think I, we have to. Like, really? He literally <laughs> like had a foot on one of the things. Like, <laughs> sir. You, I mean, I know this is the amazing race, but you know, they do care about your safety, but. And production doesn't get involved. Like they will let you drive the wrong way for like 84 hours. Like they see. don't get involved. Right. But at some point, some producer is going to have to be like, ah, uh, like, what are you doing? You're not climbing that. But right. I feel like somebody had to tell him like, tell your brother he's not supposed to climb that. Yes. Like, I, I feel like it was the, uh, I feel like it was the, the people doing it. Like, no, don't. Don't don't climb it. But yeah. I loved his spirit though. Like that's why I feel like they're going to I feel like they're going to go far because I feel like they have the daredevil go get them type of attitude. So I mean, we love to see it. I do like the attitude. I like the positivity. And speaking of, so we have Rod, the NFL player, who fought, when he gets in the car, he goes, Where's the map? And I'm like, dude, you don't get a map. There's no map. Like, come on. But anyway, he is here. He is excited. He will tell you he's here. And he is screaming about it. And I am such, I didn't think I was necessarily going to be a fan of them. I thought she was going to be a little too high maintenance. I thought he was going to be a little bit too type A, muscly man, whatever. I love Brooke, them. Mm -hmm. We are on the same page. I just knew I was, I, in my mind, I was like, I'm not going to like Rod. I just knew it. But the second he started going, I said, uh-oh, Lewis and Michelle might be in trouble because Rod delivered. And when Rob gave us a little, the wrestling people uh, preview, uh, I, mean, I said, okay. Those wrestlers were like, ooh, okay. Let me, <laughs> let me see, Rod. T turn around. Oh, God. Okay. So then, as we do every season, the credits happen, right? And so I have to give my prediction on who's going to win based on the credits because we were third in the credits. And so I always look for who's I look for who's third in the credits and I look for who finishes fourth on the first leg because this is why I think these people are going to win. Third on the credits, you're going to like this, Danny and Angie. Oh. So maybe mother and son, maybe there's some subliminal something in there. There's probably not. And yet now I have to have them like at the top of my picks, which I like anyway because honestly – when you start your life allergic to, I don't know, air, and then you have to be homeschooled because you can't walk five feet without having an asthma attack. And I'm not making fun. I'm, this is legitimately, he's like, I was allergic to the walls in my school. I had, couldn't be, I couldn't go to school. And so you know that they have this bond where she's been taking care of him since the get-go. But 
you would never know he had any sort of like medical issues ever. Like he right. was, and and there's just something to be said. I have I have a friend who was sick as a child, and she is just so grateful for like everything that happens in life because of the things that she couldn't do when she was growing up. And so you can just tell that not only is he such a fan of the race, but he's just so excited to be out there and like right. doing stuff. And so you can't not root for them. Danny's like, I mean, you can, but you probably don't have a heart. I can breathe. I know. <laughs> I love it. Like I, yeah, I, yeah. So I love them. And then we meet Ricky and Cesar who have been dating for four years. They've been to this exact spot before. I know, I know like, I don't want to say favorite because I shouldn't say favorite, but honestly, I love them. For me, when they were like practically in first place, I said, oh my. And when Ricky was like, we're going to allow Caesar to do all of the the details, I was like, they smart. They're thick. Very smart. I was like, I was getting Will and James. I'm like, I could see them winning. Um, And I love their communication style and I love their competitiveness. So I, I, I also love the fact that it was like, Ricky was a super fan. And then, so say stars like now it's our dream. I'm not going like, come on. Like that is just not only relationship goals, but like race partner goals. I love the whole the thing. Best, about it. I'm trying to find me a man so that my dream will go on. <laughs> okay. Listen, where, where are you at? Come run the come run the amazing race and win my heart. Okay. The okay. DM is open. The DM is open. Comment and below. Um, we have the cousins who talk about how ooh, Karishma's parents both passed away and they're watching down on them. I love their spunk. They do do a little something a little bit later where I'm like, no, dumb, 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 dumb. But love them. And I'm so into like the communication between them and the relationship between them where they're more sisters than cousins. Um and then, you know, they talk to the rest of them. They talk to Amber and Vinny, who I'm just going to, whatever. They're fine. They. <laughs> I like, I mean, we don't really get to see much of Amber and Vinny, uh, but they are, what is it? Not nurse, anesthetist. 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 Okay. Yeah. Now, if you, mm-hmm. if you watch The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, this is a hot topic. Uh, so. But yeah, I, I like them. I definitely think they are another team that I feel like. They're in the car, and it's a, a push start. And so they just haven't figured out that you have to press the brake with the push push start to get the car started. But I do feel like once their car is started, I think that they'll be a team that we'll have to look out for. I don't believe it. I, I don't know. I, I feel like this season has a group of people who know how to navigate and a group of people who would get lost coming out of a paper bag. So you have, like, Ricky and Cesar, Rod and Letitia, Derek and Shalisa, Yvonne and Melissa, Anthony and Bailey, who know where they're going, but hit several things on the way there. And then you have the rest of them. Like, well, Karishma and Kishori were decent at getting where they were going. They were just a little bit slower. Um, But you have people like, honestly, like Mary and Chris can't find their way anywhere. Amber and Vinny are, I don't even know, they're not even in Mexico anymore at one point. Like, I don't know where the hell they go, but they're like looking at a map and they're in a fully different country. And then you have Rowan Rowan and Maya, who God love them, 55 minutes into a 90 minute episode, they were still trying to turn their car around. Like I checked the time and I'm not going to say bad things. I love them. And I asked, you know, why didn't you just back up? And I know sometimes people just don't, you don't think about it. You think, turn around. Like, you don't think to reverse. I don't know. Things happen. Mistakes were made. I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm just going to say my heart goes out to them. Because honestly, I don't know how they got, like, how did they get out? Like, I feel like somebody had to help them. Right. Because we didn't really see them get out, though, right? They just were driving. But what I loved about them was I loved how uh, Maya was like, I can't do it. Then Rohan got in it. And Rohan was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I liked how they just were like in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, But I tell you this. That ain't my car and it ain't my insurance. That bumper would have been straight up. Boom. Just rip it off. Give yourself an extra few inches. I agree. I would have been on the sidewalk. Okay, this is not my car. But listen, they got out of it. That's I would have like employed 500 local people and been like, can you help us just lift the car? Like you need to do something because I that had to have taken a very long time. But honestly, all the credit in the world to Rowan and Maya because despite 
despite the fact that it took them so long to get where they were going, they really didn't go home by very much time. They really, really did very, very quickly at the tests. Okay, so when people finally found the Birdmen, um, it, there was a detour clue. It was pick them up or pin them down. And so pick them up was move two rocking horses, large and less large, down the cobblestone streets to a plaza so that the same kid could jump on every last rocking horse. He was and give you your, He the was so cute. <laughs> But like, let some other kid get a chance, right? Like it was just him on him. He's like, and now I'll jump on this one. And now I jump. He was very cute. And then pin him down was watch wrestlers in masks for 40 seconds then identify the matchups by the masks. Right. Okay. Um, and we may have a new judge in the running for Brooks favorite. Judge. I thought of it. Mm -hmm. But so we're clear from a winner of Amazing Race. The wrestling yeah. challenge is clearly the challenge that we should have went with right absolutely okay 100 percent. i mean not only for like navigation purposes i mean that's what i would have gone with because i my memory is way better than my you know noodle arms and so and also i think it's faster you know eventually you're gonna get it um and the horses i mean ricky and sacer were like we've been here before we've seen the horses we knew these things were big they're I think it's a little bit they had an unfair advantage in leg one because they'd been here and so they had scouted out the area beforehand. And you know, you know that Ricky, because he's such a super fan, even though there's no way to have ever known this, would be, was like, okay, so if the Amazing Race ever comes here, here's what they're going to do. Like, you know he was scouting it out. The thing that pissed me off, though, about this was there wasn't a – too many people couldn't do the memory with the wrestling. Have enough horses for every team. It doesn't bother me. I like that you don't have enough horses for every team. Not and, everyone should get to do the same side of the detour. Then everybody shouldn't be able to do the direct. Everybody shouldn't be able to do the wrestling. Then I don't think everyone was. I think it was seven teams can do each one or something like that. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so for pick them up, you have Derek and Shalisa. This is where her crossword puzzles fall out. Ridiculous. Um, you have Yvonne and Melissa, Angie and Danny, Anthony and Bailey, Michelle and Sean, Amber and Vinny, Juan and Shane, and Mary and Chris all try and do it. Now, we have a moment where Mary and Chris are walking up the hill. Yes, go ahead. You in the Purple Pants Podcast sweatshirt. Who was the team last season that we gave a hard time to at the Dragon uh, that wasn't helping people? Chelsea Robin and, and Chelsea, Chelsea and, and Robin. I wish Chris and Mary would have just had a slight conversation with Chelsea and Robin. Just a little bit. Now, who yeah. would you have ever thought that I would say that? But I, I do not ever think that you would ever say that. No. In that moment with Chris and Mary, just because my heart is so protective of Chris, I was like, we need Chelsea and Robbie Robin energy right now. I mean, true. I get you want to be helpful to people at the beginning, but you're in the back. And what the hell are you doing? Like, no, you let these super buff, mm -hmm. faster than you military guys, like hoof it up to the top of that hill and see there are no horses for themselves. And then there, she's like, do you want to work together? And they're like, yeah. And th they part ways in 10 seconds, that last 10 seconds. Now, I do think that Shane and Juan could have been a little bit helpful at the memory challenge when they both got there because Mary saved you some time at the horses and you saw, I don't know if you saw it, you would think we knew, maybe they didn't know that Rowan and Maya were still behind you, but like they really helped you out, Juan and Shane, like maybe return the favor like this much or don't help them out. Don't help them out. Don't help people out. And then on the other side for pin them down, you have Ricky and Sacer, you have Rod and Letitia, you have Kishori and Karishma. And this is the part where I'm like, what are you doing? They run up and they're like, we're not looking, we're not looking, sorry. And I'm like, look, what are you doing? Abs it's not on you to not look, it's on them to cover their work. So you should absolutely take every advantage that you can get. And again, I get you want to be nice at the beginning, but, you know, take the advantages where you can get them. That's yeah. my feeling. I, I feel that way too. I, yeah, I'm I'm with that. Uh, I also love how like uh, Kishori and uh, Karishma were like, setting the precedent like we ain't trying to copy off of y'all right so i kind of like that a little bit but i would have been like i'm not copying no i'm not looking for y'all i'm not looking. over there mm -hmm. uh but i also thought juan and shang would have been a little better directionally because they fly airplanes okay no just i try to understand right. I, I just right i was like surprised at how far behind uh 
directionally they were. Uh, but again, I just feel like they are in the cockpit and they are just waiting for the plane's jet fuel. That's what I have completed. to say. You're going to put it in every episode, aren't you? Okay. So uh, that is episode one's mention of cockpit. Got it. But yeah. I, uh, I was like, Mary, what is you doing? But yeah. again, maybe it will come back. No. I don't believe it. Because if it was going to come back, it would have come back here. And I don't see. Now, I'm going to say this. I have no problem with this. But I don't see Juan and Shane being like, hey, Chris and Mary, here, let us help you. That's okay. I'm not saying they have to. I'm just saying it. Mary, I saw being like, oh, but, but little bit of help. I don't see it going the other way. And that's fine. It doesn't have to. I don't think it should have gone the first way. Well, I'm, I wasn't saying it's going to come back to them in that way. I was oh. saying it might come back to them on a detour or a, a roadblock or what, whatever. What's the call where you got a U-turn? U-turn. Ah, if they have any. Now, I almost, and I say this with love, but I almost, somebody gave Rohan and Maya a U-turn. <laughs> The universe. They gave it to themselves, man. Like honestly, your car has river. I'm not gonna, not gonna harp on it. In that moment, though, I could, I could see myself getting a little flustered. Like I I don't know what to do, but I'm from Philly. So flustered that you actually turn the car 180 degrees, or so flustered that you go to turn a couple times and you're like, wait a second. I think so (laughs) flustered that like you just get to the bottom and you realize like, oh shoot, and then your first instinct is to turn the car around. What's Uh, your second instinct? My second instinct is to put that bad boy in reverse. Right. Is your second Uh, instinct to make this this turn, 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 like 400 times or is your second instinct to back it up? Again, love them. No, I do. I love them. I'm not really not saying anything bad. I really am just mostly sad. I don't think they should have gone home. Okay. So. Pick them up, obviously, was the harder detour. Um, Derek and Shalisa nailed it. You, Yvonne and Melissa, who, by the way, so cute. They talk about how they met three years ago in a group that call, was called Girls Who Like Girls Who Like Hiking. <laughs> I like them. I think they're cute and spunky, and I want them to do really well. And is they there, seem to communicate really well. You are on the Facebook, Brooke. So do is there groups that are like boys that like boys that like boys that podcast? Ooh, I'm gonna find it. Okay, keep me, keep me. Posted. Homework assignment: Boys who like boys who like podcasting. I'm getting me a man this this season. Okay, okay, that that Don't is my me. roadblock. We getting it. Okay. Um, and then you have Anthony and Bailey and Amber and Vinny who are working together on this and decide they're just gonna take their horses off roading and go right down a hill, which was hilarious. This was the moment where I actually liked Amber. She's having a really hard time. I feel like she's going to be edited like I was. And she's having a hard time. She's like, ow, ow, ow. And he's like, what do you need? She goes, could you just go away? away. And his response was like, okay. He's so chill that he was like, okay, I'm I'm gone. I, I'm holding this horse for you, but I, I can go. That's fine. Um, this and also then, when uh, Danny's horse kind of fell over uh, and Angie was like, you need me to help you? Cause you know, mama got you. I was like, Oh, I love She's you. Ama- I love her. She's amazing. Um, and then on the other side, on the pin them down, on the pin them down side, um, Ricky and Caesar and the detour first, um, by the way, their judge hilarious, <laughs> almost as good as Kishori and Charisma's judge who, when they get it, the judge like full body convulses, <laughs> like, yes, I really, they do a really good job with the judges, like this cute little kid. And then these, Lucha Libre referees who are just very, very animated. Love it. So anyway, Ricky and Cesar do it in four tries. They do great. Ron and Leticia are second. Kishori and Karishma are third. Um, And then on the other side, you have Derek and Shalisa, Amber and Vinny, Anthony and Bailey, um, Yvonne and Melissa, Sunny and Busy, who get very little airtime. Right. Very little airtime, but what you do get to hear is about how they are three women who uh, are of 16 positions of 1,800 people who applied for the fire department. And that is like hella impressive. And they're doing this to show that they're their children, what women can do. And I'm all about this female empowerment. And I want them to have a whole lot more airtime next week because they did not get enough. Agreed. That's how I feel anyway. Um, and then you have Juan and Shane who come up and show up at the pin them down one and fly through it. Honestly, they're they're like really, really good at tasks because when they get to the roadblock, uh, that was like my little chuckly moment because when 
Shane, I want to say, does the roadblock. He jumps over so many people, and the way he just jumps through the little hoops is really, really cute. Okay, but we'll get there. And then you have at the end uh, Chris and Mary and Rohan and Maya, who both do the pin him down one, and then everyone is on their way to this rodeo. Yes. Question: Do you think? <clears throat> uh, do you think any producers helped Rohan and Maya? Because another thing, because I was rooting for them, and mm -hmm. my like my heart was in my ankles uh this whole episode and i was like i hope they do not pick the horses because if they were to pick the horses and go all the way like it would have just been so over for them i don't think producer helped them for two reasons one i think they were smart enough to know that it said only seven people can do the horses and they were like we know we're in the back we're not going to bother trying but also they both were very very um adamant that memory was like their thing right. because she's a biology major or something. Um, and they're both students and they study and their memories are really, really good. And so I don't, I think that was just a lucky break for them in this situation. And so as the day goes, everyone ends up going to this um, horse lasso place. I'll mispronounce it. So I'm just going to say the horse lasso place where they have a roadblock, which says who's feeling loopy. So you have to jump through a series of spin seven spinning lassos without knocking off your hat. Now, I have a gripe, but I'll keep it small. I mean, you have to know my gripe, right? Like people are holding what it their is, hats. But what? I, well, uh, I thought your gripe was going to be read the clue. Uh, well. But. Ah. I wrote it down so I could show it when the time came. No, but people were holding their hats. The whole thing was don't let your hat get knocked off. You shouldn't be allowed to hold your hat. Well, I, no, I, because people's heads are different. Not my shapes. problem. Uh huh. Yeah. So they had a little tightening thing. Tighten well, that as is much true. As possible. That is true. Uh, that is true. But no, I think you should be able to hold your head. Uh, this is when I knew that Rod might just have to be my Lewis this season because when he was like, uh, uh, I, I'm six four, I can shrink down a little bit, but you gotta open that rope up again. I was like, okay. And she's all, you can shrink down, really? Like. I huge. don't even, I'm not even going to touch that one, bro. <laughs> okay. Because Mama Cam High is watching. Okay. Shout out to the Cam Highs. Um, Hi, Mom. <laughs> this, is, this is when I, my, I already knew I loved Kashuri and Karishma, but oh, yeah. I was mad at Karishma, but I also was like, in that moment, I was Karishma, though. Because Kashorni was like, girl, read the clue. Karishma was like, girl, shut up. I got it. Shut up. And then. The okay. worst part is, Kashori was like, give me the clue. And she's like, no, I need it. I'm doing the roadblock. I need that clue. But you heard her read it. And she's like, put the hat and the handkerchief. And she just, like, glossed over it. She was so, out. The thing is with her, some people, like, Ron did, Ron did it in five tries. Sacer did it in four tries. The funniest part to me was all, Rob was all, I don't know if the guy, other guys are going to be right behind us because I'm an athlete and I don't know if he did it as fast as I did. Well, he did it one faster than you did actually, sir. So okay. Ricky and Cesar, thumbs up. Like Derek, um, I, I wrote, did he do this in one try? Like Derek she's, was out. Out. She's cheering for, Shalise is cheering for him and she has the mindset to be like, he doesn't want to hear me talk. Like she knows, which is so funny. I actually I love really Shalisa. love their, uh, I Shalisa love their though. dynamic. They're, they're going to be great to watch. I, uh, I was cracking up at, Car first of all, I feel like I, all I'm talking about is Karishma. Yeah. But I was like, you know, uh, I think she said like, she's uh, half Mexican or her dad was Mexican and she's like, I, I'm gonna kill this. I'm gonna do this. And uh, then it's like, I just knew when the way that they edited, like how she said, like, it's a part of my heritage. I'm gonna kill it. And then it was like, try six, try seven. And then I feel like on try 19, 19 before she got it and then was not given the clue. And she's like, what? And she, she goes, did I do it? Like, she just, yeah, it's like in total Brooke fashion, she was screeching, did I do it? And they didn't give her anything. She's like, let me read it. And she's like, oh, handkerchief. No, and she then, had to ask, she had to ask uh, Kashori for the clue back. And she like, just throw it. But I was cracking up at Karishma at like try 10 when she didn't even try to jump in. She just was dancing. She was, she was just like, like this. I was like, okay, see, I love their energy. Same, I feel same, like, 100%. Reminds me of Lulu and Lala, right? Yeah, like, I like, I just, I like, like that. So, I also like the fact that when they found where they were going to the rodeo, they were like, that's the right street. Make a laugh. Like I just, they're, they're, they're very joyous to watch. Like I, 
they could have gone the other way for me, but like, I'm really, really enjoying them. But I also like the fact that she didn't get it after 19 tries. And then she puts on her little kerchief and then she has to start over and she gets it on like the 23rd try. But even with 23 tries, they're still in fifth place. Like they were doing so well that they had so much of a cushion that they're still in fifth. Now you have Juan and Shane who come in there and Shane does it in two tries, which Killed is how me. they end up in fourth. But the way he's jumping is like, it almost looked a little bit like Super Mario cartoon where his like little hurdle jumps through the thing. He did a great job. I was really, really impressed with him. I watched a lot of them uh, over and it seemed like you have to, it's almost like your feet have to go in front of your body. Like you have to like lift your feet up and go over. Uh, I know a little out of order, but um, what's the uh, ant? I don't know if it's Bailey or Anthony. Anthony. They smoke that. That's First what I'm, try. That's what I I'm saying. As soon as that, so th the car is uh, it's on now. So it's like they're going to, be, uh, yeah, I'm loving them. I mean, I feel like when they're told what to do, they do it well. But if they don't have a direction where it's like they're just given a scene in front of them, they're like, whoa, <laughs> climb this? Like, where's the clue box? Like, where is it? And it's right there like they had their blinders on which is okay i think it may just take a little time i do think they're gonna end up doing well i don't i don't think they're as surfer dude ditzy as they may appear i think that they have a whole lot more going on up here than meets the eye and so i think they're gonna do really well and so what meets the eye is fine enough so <laughs> you know we are here for the surfer kings what's better than one two two <laughs> And then, so you have um, Karishma and Kishori who finally get out of there after 23 tries. Um, but they got, they got like 14 tries before anyone else even showed up. So you knew they were doing really, really well with their navigation. Um, and then you have Yvonne and Melissa. It takes Yvonne like eight tries, but she, like, nobody's spirit really drops. Everyone seems to, like, <laughs> like, go through it without getting frustrated, which I don't totally understand. Like, that's just not my mentality, but I should work on that. Um, and then you have uh, Danny, Danny, bless his heart. He's scared of horses because why not? I mean, he was taken to a pony show as a kid and fell off a horse. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have gone outdoors. Like he was probably allergic to the horses. But he was so, you could tell when he was walking into the arena and there was a horse right there. And Andy's like, oh, look at the horse. He's like, And like totally ran the other way. Like he was, he's very cute to watch. Yeah. Sometimes super fans can be a little bit much, but I actually really, really, really enjoy them and enjoy him specifically. So, and he did, he did really well. I mean, it's, he did it. It took him like 10 tries to do it, but again, spirit stayed up pretty quick. And then he's like, thank you, Mahana. And like walked out, like just very calm and whatever. Um, and then you have Sean and Michelle show up and he's all, I do double Dutch. I'm going to do great. And then he's not doing great. But again, he's like, I clicked myself into instructor mode and I was ready to go. The cute thing about them here is where this is the first time they're without their kids. And so this is about them. And they're just, the love that they have for each other is so adorable where he's like, who's looking for a cowboy? And she's like, I am. Like, they're just really very like heartwarming. So I hope they do very well too. I hope everyone does well. How's that? Po well, almost. How's that possible? Right. It's it's going to be a hard season for us. Uh, they, the double dutchers reminded me of like Ashley and Todd a little bit, but I also could see Ashley and Todd and Ron and Letitia, but um, you know, I see everybody in Ashley and Todd. Cause we and a Ashley little and bit Todd. in Derek and Shalisa. Cause I, oh, yeah. I remember when they were, they were um, doing the thing with the canoe or whatever. And she's like, where are the chains? And he's like two chains. And she's like, shut up. When he's like, He's like, I'm just having fun. And she's like, this is not the time. For not time. the time. I saw that a little bit there and it made me smile and laugh because we love Todd and Ashley. So hi, Todd and Ashley. Um, and then Sunny did it in two tries. So you feel like people either did this right away or it took them, you know, charisma level number of tries, but one or the other. And then you have um, Amber and Vinny show up and Vinny does this, I think, on the first try. I mean, again, put them at a task. They're doing well. Put them in a car. They're in Bolivia. And then you have Chris and Mary show up and she stays so positive. I, I can get through my mother's death. I can mm. get through anything. I mean, yeah, I guess it's right. very, very true. But they don't seem to be particularly hurried, which is a little concerning for me because stop giving people in the back answers and maybe put a little hop in your step. 
Like, don't tell your dad it's okay to go slowly because it's not. And then Rowan and Maya show up, and they're only minutes behind. Like, I I think he did this on the first try also, which yeah. is Rowan really was killing impressive. It. Killed it. And he's like, we're only 10 minutes behind. If somebody else stops for directions, we are golden. And then you see Chris and Mary stop for directions because editing, and we know what you're trying to do here. We are not going to fall for it. So then everyone has to go to the pit stop. Um where Phil has all of these clues in his back pocket. Now, the other thing is when Rowan and Maya show up, he still has a clue in his back pocket. And I'm thinking, maybe, maybe there's a chance that we call it a mega leg and they get to keep going. But no. Um, so at the pit stop, you have Ron and Letitia, no prize. And she's all, where's my prize? <laughs> and he's all, well, I don't have one. Here's your envelope. And so... Um, yeah, then they have to keep racing. Ricky and Cesar come in second. I love them. Love. Uh, Derek love. and Shalisa come in third. <laughs> and so the funny thing is, you can tell if they've seen a lot of episodes of the show because when Phil says to them, your team, uh, you're the third team to arrive rather than your team number three, they're like, okay, great. And he goes, however, and she's like, you can see the like just the blood mm -hmm. drain from their face because they're like, what we do wrong? What we do wrong? What's our penalty? But he's like, however, you're still racing. And they're like, okay, okay. Um, and then Juan and Shane jump to four. Well, here's um, my now. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I, we can't be so so nice. Well, okay. one we love Juan and Shane. Uh, they're a little dramatic Was at I the match. So, so nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I worry that I feel like they might be the team this season. That when a lot of groups are together and everyone's stressing and they get it, they're going to be like the. No! Oh, okay. You, you know, sometimes we all love that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, because I was like, you kissing the ground, but guess what? You you still racing. You got to go. That's true. However, they came in fourth on the first no, I, leg, I, which I is where thinking. we came in. So now I'm thinking maybe they're going to win the whole thing. There's no reason for me to think that. But these are things that I look for and think about. But yes, they did like kiss the ground. It did. It was a little much. That being I mean, said, they're used to being in the air, so you know. I, mean. I kissed the ground after I skydived. I got to the ground and I kissed. I was dramatic. I was overly dramatic. And I'm on the video being like, they're like, did you love it? And I was like, sure. Would you ever do it again? It's like, no. <laughs> okay. So anyway, then you have Michelle and Sean, Yvonne and Melissa, Angie and Danny, Anthony and Bailey, Sunny and Busy, and then Kishori and Karishma. Honestly, like I thought they would have been higher up here and they would have been had she put on her kerchief. So remember in the future, read your Blue. um and then you have amber and Vinny. oh no you don't amber and Vinny. they cut to in a car and they're god knows somewhere else i don't i don't know how they're gonna do i don't it's like wait we gotta make this u-turn then we'll be right on track yeah but also like how far are you gonna go before you u-turn like just cut over the ground like I'm, i would break every traffic rule what ask for forgiveness not permission just go do it what are they gonna do once you've done it maybe they give you a penalty but at this point you're at the back but okay, so then Mary and Chris show up and Amber and Vinny show up at the exact same moment. So it does, they're not actually as far away as the production would allow us to believe. And finally, you have Rowan and Maya who show up and they are just so sweet. Like there's no hard feelings. They thank Phil and they walk off hand in hand, best hand friend. Hand, like yeah. I am legitimately tearing up. You texted me, why am I crying? Like <laughs> this is. I loved Rohan. Uh, this um, this is one where first teams to go home, usually I'm not that upset. This is one where I feel like this one hurt because I feel like they they would they I bet they had so much institutional knowledge of the race that they just didn't get to use. Uh yeah, because I honestly um they had that one bluster in the car and you can see it's kind of like they lost themselves. But at every one of the challenges, they clocked in. Like, and that's the thing that was like so out so frustrating because it's like, oh, I wish we could see more of them. I I absolutely love them. I got the opportunity to meet Rohan uh not that long ago, and he was so nice. He knew about the pit stop. Uh, I called Brooke. I was like, oh my God, you gotta say hi to Brooke. And, yeah. And classic Brooke, she was doing something, but tried to like, hey, I'm well, like, I was on my way to the airport. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> I know, but Brooke couldn't hear us, but she continued the conversation. I'm like, girl. And then I uh, messaged him on the side too, because I have also gotten to meet him at this point. And he's so lovely. So and nice. I just feel like, you know, had they not made that one mistake, they'd still be in it because oh, they were a so thousand percent. close. And I just maybe, maybe I've never once advocated for a season of bringing back first ones out, but 
this is one where I would be like, bring them back. They they have knowledge to use. And there was just one little mistake. Unfinished business. Rowan and Maya, I, bring them I back. I would love to see it. And it also just makes me think, knowing the season that came after them, but really came before, the people to go home first were siblings as well. Uh, Sheldon and... Oh, uh, oh. it's not Sheldon. Uh, I, keep, I keep saying <laughs> Sheldon. And you know when I met Sheridan. 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 And but, Alexandra and Sheridan. And they were great, but yeah. uh, Rohan and Maya were different where they could make decisions. Like, they, like I just like, oh, I was rooting so much They made the them. wrong decision, but one wrong decision can cost you the race, and that's unfortunate. I don't think you should bring back first boots, but I do think you should bring back this first boot because okay. I think that they have a lot more to give, and we didn't get to see all that they could do. So Agreed. Mm. Uh, very sad to see them go, but very excited that the race continues. Yes. And Brooke and I will be back every week covering Amazing Race Season 36. This has been your pit stop of Episode 1. We'll be back next week. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye. Pit stop. Pit, pit, pit stop. It's a pit stop. Pit, pit, pit stop. It's, it's a pit stop. Pit, pit, pit stop. It's a pit stop. Pit stop. Pit stop. Pit stop. Pit stop.